Well, it's been a minute since I bought this backpack and I've been using it daily since I purchased it back in July last year. Now, before we get into what I love and what I don't love about this very expensive camera backpack, I wanna give a little context about what I was dealing with before I pulled the trigger on this thing. Now, the camera bag I was using before this one was made by a company that no longer exists, okay? That's how long I had owned it and put up with it not really being the ideal tool for the job of lugging all of my filmmaking and content creation gear around. Now, why is that? Well, the bag was designed for photographers and it came out way back in 2008, maybe 2009. I think I bought it in 2009 or 2010 when I was living in Los Angeles, but traveling a lot as a video editor, editing the screen content for live concert tours like So You Think You Can Dance, New Kids on the Block, and of course, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And because I wasn't lugging around a camera back then, this old backpack was just fine for my laptop keyboard, mouse, hard drives, cables, whatever. Was it perfect? No, but it got the job done. So as the focus of my work evolved over the years from freelance traveling video editor slash aspiring Hollywood screenwriter to post-production supervisor to production company owner to now video content creator, I needed to get a brand new bag. The old bag, which I don't even have anymore. I was so over it and ready to move on. I donated it to a local thrift store, hoping it could find a new home. That bag was the source of daily friction when it came to hauling around all the stuff I needed to have access to if I was going to be making videos, writing scripts, editing away from the studio, you get the idea. And I knew if I was going to update my camera bag to something that was really tailored to my work and lifestyle, I was gonna have to pony up some serious cash, not just for the camera bag, but for some much needed accessories to help with everything from my USB and Thunderbolt cables to my SD cards and of course my camera batteries. And I knew that if I didn't buy it nice, I was gonna buy it twice. Now, why does all this matter? It matters because my situation pre-new camera bag was fairly dire and because I had an old outdated camera bag that caused a lot of friction, pretty much any new camera bag was going to be satisfying. It was going to make me happy. It was going to be looked at positively. So when I gush about this new nomadic bag, I want you to know that it's basically because I went from listening to my favorite shows on an old scratchy AM radio to watching them on a bright, beautiful 85 inch 4K OLED TV with Dolby Atomos surround sound, okay? That's the analogy that comes to mind. So just keep that in mind as I gush about this backpack. Don't hammer me on this review because you think I'm just here to try to get you to hit my affiliate link and earn me and Peter McKinnon some cold hard cash, okay? All right, so I looked at a few other camera bags from other companies, but they just weren't quite what I was looking for. And I had watched Peter's videos about how he developed the bag and the kinds of features he wanted the bag to have because his previous camera bags had areas of friction that really bothered him on a daily basis. And this is a good thing. He's going to help Nomadic innovate their bags to precisely fit his needs, and his needs are pretty much in complete alignment with my own. So I ended up ordering the everyday 25 liter bag with the ladder and two small cubes for $389.99, but I wasn't done there. If I was gonna do this, I was gonna do it right and get some of the accessories that Peter and Nomadic made to accompany this backpack. So I ordered the tech organizer for $69.99, the accessory straps for $19.99, the memory card case for $29.99, and the battery case for $29.99, which brings the grand total up to around $550. $550 for a camera bag, but listen, this is an investment, not an expense. This is a tool that's going to help me earn a living as a full-time content creator. And it's a tool that's been designed specifically to remove friction from the things we do repeatedly day in and day out. And I can't tell you how happy I've been with this bag since I purchased it. I took it to LA for Vid Summit and it was great. I took it home to my mom's over Thanksgiving and it was great. I can literally fit a mobile content creation studio into this thing. Now the details I love, the magnets on the side pouches, the large metal zipper pulls, the magnets on the accessory pouches, the magnet flap that seals the top compartment from the rest of the bag, and the fact that it stands upright when it's on the ground or a table. Who knew this could be such a life altering feature? Now here's the thing, this bag is so organizable and compartmentalized that it makes me want to fit as much stuff in here as I can. And I got a crap ton of stuff in this bag. Charging cables, hard drive cables, ear pods, adapters, neck straps, wrist straps, my EOS R, a microphone, a 24 to 105 millimeter lens, my MacBook Pro charger, batteries, SD cards, an iPad mini, an SSD drive. This thing is packed to the gills. And so when I leave the house or travel, I know I have everything I need to make videos. Are you okay, man? Yeah, I'm good. And it's all 
easily accessible and orderly because of the ladder, the cases, and all the accessories. I mean, it just checks every last damn box. So you might be thinking, okay, come on, man, there has to be something you don't like about this bag. Sure, there are a few minor points of friction with the bag, but I don't know that that's the fault of the bag or just the limitations of certain features you just have to have on a bag, like zippers. One thing I bump into is zipper collisions. I'll zip up the main compartment and the zipper pulls will kind of collide with the surrounding zippers. It gets a little crowded here at the top. I try to stagger them to avoid this, but it's not always possible. Sometimes I'll even grab the wrong zipper because they're all jumbled together and I'm not sure which one goes to what. Maybe there's a cool way to color code the zipper pulls so you can quickly visually identify which ones are which, but I can also see the trade-off that creates for the overall design aesthetic of the bag. I was on Twitter the other day and Daniel Batal had the same issue. He put a picture of the camera bag on there, mentioned it Peter McKinnon that the zippers are all crashing into each other and it's hard to know which one to grab when you're opening it. He often grabs the wrong zipper and goes into the wrong compartment. Same exact thing happens to me, so I'm not the only one. Now, whether or not this condemns the whole bag, I don't know, but maybe there's something innovative that we haven't thought of or Peter hasn't thought of that might make this a little bit better. And if he does figure that out for the next version of the Peter McKinnon Nomadic Everyday 25 liter bag, amazing. I might think about investing in a new one. And instead of giving my old one to a thrift store, maybe I'll sell it used online or just keep it for nostalgic purposes. All right, what else? One thing I loved about my old bag was that the laptop compartment's opening was at the top of the bag. You pulled your laptop out from the top to remove it. With this bag, the compartment is on the side and this creates some risk. You really have to make sure you've got a good grip on your laptop when you remove it from the bag or else you're gonna drop it. I felt a few times that I was close to dropping my MacBook Pro because my grip on the laptop slipped as I tried to pull it out from the side. And if you don't remember to zip it up after you put your laptop in there, you're in trouble. And this happened to me a few months ago. I put my laptop in there, got distracted with something else as I was packing up, forgot to zip it up, and then slung it over my shoulder to head out. Now I'm in the garage and I go to toss the backpack into my truck and the laptop falls out and by some miracle, the thing lands like an airplane hitting the runway. It just slides right across the concrete floor. Did get a couple of scuffs, but the laptop was essentially undamaged after falling over two feet to the solid concrete ground. I was really, really lucky. So I do miss the way my old camera bag stored laptops. I think the opening on top is safer, even though that may not be possible with how this backpack is designed. All right, so what else? the overall design, the look of it. It's like a stealth jet fighter with how sleek and streamlined it is, like a F-22 Raptor. Now don't get me wrong, I love the design, but I don't think that it screams me. My personal style, got this nice Oxford button down, just a bit different from the core style and aesthetic of this bag. And I don't always feel like it's an accurate reflection of who I am and what my look is. Now I know not everyone cares about these kinds of fashion nuances, but I honestly do. Now if I had to rate this bag, what would I rate it? I'd give it like a four and a half out of five. It's really hard to find something not to like about this bag. And I gotta tell you, that price tag was tough. I mean. I kept my bag for 12 years, putting up with it even though it was no longer the best tool for the job. But now that I'm on the other side of having bought this everyday bag, the bag and accessories are worth every penny of that $550. And I know I'll be using this bag for the next five plus years until my needs evolve and someone like Peter McKinnon, of course, works with an awesome company like Nomadic to come up with something new. Now I do have an affiliate link down in the description to the Nomadic Peter McKinnon Everyday 25 liter camera backpack and all of the accessories I purchased. That's all I've got for now. I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli. All right, that's it. That's it. That's all.